It's a great opportunity to be uh, listening to uh, Hailana today from Brazil. Uh, Hainana is a, uh, an MA student studying animal production. Let's know uh, everything about the animal production, how it happens, what affects, and how they try to improve and to change the animal food and the animal uh, gene. Uh, Hailana, could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Yes, of course. My name is Hailana. I'm 24 years old. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I'm a veterinarian and currently uh, I'm studying master degree in animal science in the area of uh, animal production. Yeah, and uh, what do you study in animal production? Uh, so, I study in animal production, uh, non-ruminant and ruminant uh, nutritionomic. So, uh, we have been, my, my research group has been studying about milk quality, uh, synthesis, lipogenic synthesis and gene expression which is a part of DNA, DNA uh, that regulates uh, RNA and proteins. Uh, and my group has published many studies testing the effect of the lipid supplement in dead goats, eels, uh, and this year a classmate uh, published a, a study with salts. So animal production is a branch of animal science. What, what does animal science do? Uh, so the animal science uh, is divided into big areas, uh, animal health and animal production. And, and the animal health, uh, people study uh, sanity, pathology, uh, surgery and clinic in companion animals like dog, cat, horse, uh, and with the animals. And animal production uh, research about nutrition, um, genetics, uh, animal management, forage, uh, reproduction, breeding uh, in calves, sheep, uh, goats, pig, poultry, uh, fish. Uh, it covers all animals that produce milk or meat for human consume. And how is animal production in Brazil? Could you give us an overview? Uh, yes, uh, the Brazil is the, the first production uh, export uh, to beef, uh, cattle beef. Uh, and we produce a lot of milk too, uh, and pig uh, and poultry, uh, meat too. Uh, really it's, I don't remember how is the cl classification, but I think Brazil is in, in four or three or 30 uh, classification of more, uh, that more export this kind of meat. You mentioned uh, nutrigenomic. What, what is nutrigenomic? So, nutrigenomic is part uh, of the nutrition that study how uh, some diet can affect uh, the gene expression and how it influences in all animal performance. Uh, to do that, we collect some tissue samples or we study some cells uh, of the animal body and use some lab protocols. Uh, we isolate and characterize DNA, we extract RNA uh, and measure their abundance on this tissue um, and uh, under some treatment effects. Uh, then we can say if some diet component can increase or decrease this uh, specific gene expression. How does this uh, affect animal production? Uh, so, if we understand how everything works and how the animal metabolism responds to some situations, uh, we can manipulate, for example, the animal diet uh, to improve the, the health of humans uh, that consume uh, products from animal origin like milk and meat. And if you are going to change the animal's reaction to these situations and change the animal food, uh, would the animal stay be normal and natural and healthy to eat? Yes, yes, normal. Uh, we we use it to 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 try to understand how everything works to improve the animal health and consequently improve the human health too. Uh, I think it's the, the most important to, pre to prevent that animal will be health, will be sicker, 
uh, but try to understand and how, and how we can just uh, change little things that improve and then can help uh, humans on their consumption to be more healthy. Yeah, from the beginning of like people on Earth and these animals, like people eat the natural animals and people are healthy. Now you are changing the animal itself, you are changing the food. Uh, why would this animal still be uh, natural? So, no, these, these animals uh, will continue to be, uh, be natural. Uh, but we can, for example, uh, when we, we put some uh, we supplement these animals with some lip, uh, lipids, it's just a little bit just to increase something on, on their meat, on their milk, but the animals continue to be, be healthy. Uh, it's a kind of uh, lipids are in all vegetable, in our pasture, and everything that these animals, in concentrate that these animals eat normally, but we just change a, a little bit, we just put a little bit more to, do, to see what will happen, for example. And if it's good for the animal, uh, and for the, the human health, we continue to research about that. If it's not healthy, we stop. It's just to understand how we can improve, but we not uh, we not want to change all the, the animal metabolism. We can't do that. Uh, let's say in the industries and in the companies, they want the biggest production, and then they can manipulate the food chain of the animal and uh, increase the animal weight, increase the animal production. But this may have negative effects on the consumers. How would you guarantee that um, this research, this uh, trend, would not have these uh, detrimental uh, impacts on people's health? No, it's totally uh, uh, the opposite. Uh, we study uh, that uh, some other uh, more human uh, human uh, line studies. Uh, had uh, uh, discovered that, for example, uh, uh, the meat and the how fat acids that are produced uh, in animal in animal body and animal origin uh, is good for the humans. So uh, we we have this certain the, the, the truth that uh, what we are produced are going to be good. For example, uh, we tested. Uh, CLA, uh, it's a, a fat acid that we tested, and some research discovered that it has some some anti-carcinogenic and anti-scleriotic action, and there is a good uh, immune response in human health. So it's promotion, promoting the human health, and so consequently, it's good for humans. It, it's a uh, uh, it's why we study more, more that to, to improve animals. Let's go to the next question. What is PCR? So PCR uh, is, it means polymerase chain reaction. Uh, and it's a laboratory technique that we use to do many copies of a specific region of DNA strands. Uh, we use that to have the ideal quantity to that DNA, DNA region to uh, analyze it. And, and in our case, we measure that gene expression that is in, in that little region of DNA. Uh, to determine that region, uh, we use primers, uh, which are nucleotides, uh, nucleotide se uh, sequence uh, specific for each, gene that starts the, the, uh, this DNA replication, for example. It's a, a lot of work, uh, a lot of in a, a big, big uh, uh, little thing, in a bigger work uh, in lab. <laughs> and how does that affect the animal? Uh, uh, the yeah, you, you say PCR, you study the, uh, the gene yes. formation. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is a, a lab technique. Uh, so we just, uh, we do everything in vitro. So we just need uh, some tissue uh, or some, 
samples of the animal body. We not work directly in animal. We, we reduce this impact. We, we try to do animal in the, in the normal uh, life. And we just pick a little bit of, of this tissue or mammary gland or adipose tissue and, and do this test uh, in the lab. Yeah, and what, what is CLA? CLA, uh, it's an um, isomer, uh, a fatty acid isomer, that we, we found uh, in the animal fermentation, uh, in the ruminant uh, biohydrogen, biohydrogenation. Uh, in the, uh, and it's a, a group of isomers that are derived from a linoleic acid, or it's common to say omega-6 that it's a good fat acid. Uh, and it, it will be fine just in, under some ruminal conditions, and it's uh, uh, isomers, and they've been studied because uh, that health promotion, uh, anti-carcinogenic and anti-esperiotic uh, actions, and good immune response modulation, and to increase that in, in human intake, uh, some research try to enrich the daily food, and uh, one option it was to to supplement the the production animals. You mentioned uh, saturated acids and the unsaturated fatty acids. What are the differences between both? Uh, so, uh, fatty acids uh, are compounds uh, formed by by uh, carbon chains attached with hydrogen atoms. Uh, uh, the saturated ones, uh, the carbons are attached by simple bonds, uh, while unsaturated had one, I have one or or more double bonds uh, in their structural structural molecular. Uh, at the room temperature, uh, saturated are solid and unsaturated are liquid. Uh, saturated are found in animal products, while uh, unsaturated are found in vegetable products uh, like soya bean and corn oils things like that and why do you study them uh, because they them influence their influence on, on the animal health uh, there are some discuss about uh, which are more um, important are good or worst or what what happened in the human health so uh, we study a lot about about them because there are not uh, anyone certain the people are are in doubt about what's good and what, uh, which one is good and which one is not so and it, uh, saturated acids are found in everything that we eat, we eat normally, uh, and we, we think it's important to understand how how it you uh, how it is produced and how we can improve and things like that. Uh, another question: What is the origin of short chain and long chain uh, fatty acids in the ruminants? Uh, yes, uh, fatty acids with no more 16 carbons on their chain, uh, they are the short uh, chain fatty acids. And, and they are derived uh, from a process we call de novo synthesis. And it happens in the mammary gland and at post two uh, in ruminants. And this substrate fr uh, from that, uh, it's from the ruminal from fermentation that is used to synthesize these new fat acids by some en enzymes like uh, acetyl-CoA, carboxylase, and fat acid synthase. Uh, they will action uh, to produce these new fat acids. Uh, however, uh, the long, uh, long chain fat acids, uh, they have more than 16 carbons on their chain, they are longer. Uh, and they are normally absorbed by, by the, the diet through some other en enzyme action. Okay, so uh, another area, how can milk fat content uh, uh, affect the animal corporeal condition score? Uh, 
uh, when there is an excess of fat acid uh, in the in the blood uh, and they are not in mammary gland to produce milk fat milk uh, they will be deposited uh, in the adipose tissue uh, like a reserve energy that and it, and it can improve the corporal balance in in animals what is the corporal condition score about an animal? So the corporal uh, condition score, uh, it's a, a form to measure how this animal, how this animal is uh, thin or fat. Uh, for example, there are a score uh, that we uh, measure uh, if it's good or not. Uh, for example, uh, when the animal is with two, a uh, score two, uh, it's an animal that needs some attention on its um, nutrition and what this animal is eating because it's not good. Uh, this animal is thin and we need to, to improve this, this reserve energy. And when the animal is a, a four score, uh, it's a good animal. But we need mm -hmm. so uh, yeah yeah we, we say um, what is what is the animal uh, corporal condition score? So the animal uh, corporal condition score uh, it's a, a, a method uh, we use to to understand how this animal to classificate this animal. Uh, to see if this animal is too thin or too fat or in the middle of the, this way, and we can we can say we can pay more attention. For example, if the animal is in a score two, uh, we need more attention on their food and what the, this animal is eating uh, because it, it can be a, a problem. Uh, we need to improve this reserve energy. Uh, it's, it's important for the, the animal health. But of course, if the animal is in a score five or a four, uh, we can have some reproduction problems too, because a lot of fat can can decrease this 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 reproduction, and we need to pay attention to when what this animal is eating. So this score is a, a kind of we use to to uh, this animal age. So, uh, if the animal is uh, thin or the animal is fat, does this mean it is unhealthy? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, if the animal is, is too thin, the animal is not healthy and we need to improve and put more food to the animal eat. And if the animal uh, is too fat, we need to pay attention because a lot of fat is not good too. And we need to, to change this diet to improve the animal performance and, and animal reproduction too. Yeah, what else affects the final product uh, and the animal performance? Uh, yes, of course, the diet is just one thing. Uh, the management, how, how they manage, uh, conduce this animal, how uh, this animal are produced, uh, the genetic, uh, the animal age, for example, uh, uh, old animal uh, are not produced as a young animal. Um, a lot of factors that uh, need to be available when we talk about animal production. Uh, and we, we used to say the more we control of this, these factors, the better the animal response is. So um, my question is, um, like you are changing a lot of the animal's genes, the animal, uh, let's say, structure, the animal food, um, and you are more industrializing this process. How would the public trust what you are doing? Uh, we think nowadays that people are more um, uh, conscious that it's important to to eat uh health food and much more uh the more we we try to improve that the more the the meat and the milk are improved with uh some this 
the product, uh, the the quality of that, uh, we think the the public will will like it because nowadays we we are more um, we are more conscious that uh, we need to to look uh, after our our health. If you uh, were to go inside the restaurant and you were offered two dishes, one uh, meat from just an animal that comes from nature somewhere, and an animal that comes from your lab, which one uh, would you go for? Uh, <laughs> I, will go, uh, I will go for my lab animal, of course, because I know uh, it's a quality. I know uh, how these animals are going to is producing uh i think we need to trust in our quality <laughs> so the next question is uh, which do you think should be more expensive or which should be cheaper than the other uh the meat from nature or the meat from uh, modified or lab produ produced animals uh we, we not think uh, too much about uh cheap or expensive uh, we, we try to think more about health and of course uh, if we, we put more supplements the, this production animal will be a little bit expensive but it will be more healthy so we think much more about health than, than, than price of, the, of everything. Of course if we can add it, uh, both things are, are better but nowadays we, we try to to produce uh, the healthy and later we can think about more the, the price of everything. Okay, nowadays the number of pop the population around the world is increasing and it will keep more and more increasing. In the past there were not, there was not that big number of people, so the people did not need to increase or improve the amount of uh, produced meat. Uh, don't you think that your work is um, a reaction or a production of the need for more meat. So it's only uh, for more meat, not caring about the quality of what you are producing? Yes, uh, we think that uh, it's important to produce uh, in quantity, but we, we can't uh, forgot, forget the, the quality. We think it's more important uh, the quality of the, the animals uh, and how it can influence on, on human health, uh, it's much better, we think, in, in quality than in quantity. Of course, we can, if we can, can produce everything together, uh, it will be better. But uh, we, we think much more about quality. In the future, when do you think that uh, we will be able to uh, produce enough meat for everyone? For everyone, mm. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think we we need to produce a lot to to every world uh, can can be contact with uh, quality or and the uh, the animal origin product. But we need to improve. We had a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. What else would you like to say? Uh, I think uh, something about the English. Uh, I think English is so important in our research area. For example, all the 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 research, uh, all the articles are in English nowadays, and we need to do this second language and study a little bit more because who study English is a little uh, a degree uh, higher than the other one, uh, and we need to. To have uh, to have this contact with all the world, and uh, I want to thank you uh, for the invitation, and I'm happy to to talk about a little bit about my job today. Yeah, that has been more than fantastic. Thank you, uh, hi Lena, so much for your time, for your help, and for this great input from your side. Thank you much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>